We have all eaten fast food, and some of us may have gotten a hair in the food, which is disgusting. But some people have it way worse because they received dead rats, glass, and even human body parts. So in today's video, I'm going to ruin fast food for you by talking about disgusting items found in fast food. McDonald's Fried Chicken Head Just to let you know, I will be talking about McDonald's a lot in this video, so... If you're eating McDonald's while watching this video, I am so sorry. In late 2000, a woman named Catherine Ortega of Newport News, Virginia found a chicken head in an order of McDonald's Mighty Wings, which were being test marketed in her area. She took her order home and noticed the unusual shaped wing in the box. Upon closer inspection, she realized it was an intact, breaded chicken head. Ortega first contacted the McDonald's store, but she was not satisfied with the manager's offer of a refund or a replacement order. Ortega considered a lawsuit, but she never went through with it, probably because she didn't eat the chicken head, or maybe finding a cooked chicken head is not considered a foreign object in a box filled with cooked chicken parts. Many people believe that Ortega actually planted the chicken head in the Mighty Wings so she can win a lawsuit, but she never did like I said. And also, it's not like she was hiding the evidence because she was openly showing the chicken head to reporters, so she wasn't hiding anything suspicious. So in my opinion, I do believe that Ortega did find a real chicken head in a box of chicken wings because finding a chicken head in a box filled with cooked chicken shouldn't be too weird. And even though this story was from the late 2000s, this story got even more popular in 2015 with many YouTubers talking about this incident out of the blue. So yeah, till this day, it's not confirmed if Ortega did plant the chicken head or not, but in my opinion, I don't think so. KFC Chicken Lung Mark Nicholas bought a three-piece meal from a KFC in Australia. When he got his meal, he took a bite out of the chicken, but it turns out that the chicken he bit into was actually a chicken's lung. When he told the employees what he just bit into, the employees didn't care and didn't even bother to offer him a refund. At least with the Ortega chicken head story, she was offered a refund, but in KFC, nah, fuck you. You bought the chicken, so get out of here. They didn't even offer him a refund, which it is kind of funny, but kind of mean and disgusting because he actually bit into it and from the looks of it i couldn't find anything if he sued kfc or not from the looks of it i don't think he did which in my opinion he should have because i'm pretty sure he would have won the lawsuit considering he actually bit into the chicken's lung but hey i am not a lawyer and if you're wondering how did a chicken lung get into the chicken well I assume that the produce factory where KFCs buy their chicken from, they accidentally forgot to remove the lungs. That's how I assume how the chicken lung got into the KFC chicken. That's just my assumption and I'm probably right because I don't see any other way how a piece of chicken lung would have got into a KFC meal. Just want to quickly say thank you for clicking on this video and make sure to watch to the end of this video. And hopefully by the end, if you think I earned your subscription, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, one of the biggest compliments you can give to a YouTuber is saying that you eat food while watching their videos. Like, I used to do that as a kid and I still do it till this day, but... I don't blame you guys for not eating food while watching this video and not so long ago I got a comment saying that they eat Popeyes every time when they watch one of my videos. Well Popeyes is mentioned in this video so good luck to that person. Popeyes rat. Rats are sometimes common in fast food restaurants and maybe after talking about this specific story I may talk about the other rat stories back to back because there is just so many disgusting rat stories in this video. So, um, you probably would never go and eat at a fast food restaurant after watching this video. On September 18th, 2016, Facebook user Rosemary Thomas shared a four panel image of what she claimed was a deep fried rat head. Rest in peace to the person who eats Popeyes while watching my videos. I'm sorry. The restaurant has an A rating and the restaurant was investigated but found no rat problem so that could mean that before the restaurant got their chicken supply, a rat could have fallen into the chicken. 
Allegedly, an appointment was set up so the person who received the rat head can meet up with someone from Popeyes so they can run tests. Most of the time when they take a test on a food item, they tend to see if there's any diseases, etc. But they also take tests to see if it's an actual rat, which, from the picture, it's obviously a rat head, so no need to test for that. And speaking of testing for rats, there is this famous KFC story where allegedly a rat fell into a deep fryer and was served to a person, but after testing, it turns out it's actually 100% white chicken meat, so it wasn't a rat in the first place, and it was actually a weirded shaped piece of chicken, so yeah, I wanted to talk about that story even more in this video, but it wasn't real, it was fake, because it wasn't even a rat in the first place, but I did want to briefly mention it because I have a feeling some of you guys are gonna mention the story in the comments below but I do want to confirm that this image is an actual piece of chicken and not a rat that fell into a deep fryer. Subway rat. In 2015, a man in Oregon opened up his Subway sandwich and discovered an entire rat in it, wrapped in spinach. Matt Jones said, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen but it's also the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. To be honest, you should never get spinach on a Subway sandwich. Like, I'm a Subway enthusiast, it's one of my favorite restaurants, and if you get spinach on your sandwich, you deserve this to happen to you. I'm just kidding, but obviously Matt did not take a bite out of the sandwich, but in Subway, you see them make the sandwich, didn't you see the employee grab a rat and put it in your sandwich? And the same thing goes with the employee, like, you just grabbed a rat and put it into the sandwich. How did you not feel a rat in spinach? Spinach and rat, they both feel completely different. The restaurant was investigated and Subway determined that the rat probably came in the bag spinach because the restaurant itself doesn't have a rat problem. And Matt did get his $6 refund which instead of his $6 refund, I'm pretty sure he should have sued. And I'm not a lawyer once again, but I'm pretty sure he would have won the case. Chick-fil-A rat. Chick-fil-A, more like rat filet. In 2017, Ellen is suing over a rat she claims was baked into the bottom bun of her chicken sandwich at a Chick-fil-A in Pennsylvania. A coworker had picked up the sandwich for her in November, and when they started eating together, she says she felt something funny on the bottom of the bun, and when she turned it over, she assumed that they burned the bun pretty bad. But according to an interview on Philly.com, after taking a closer look, her coworker Kara realized it was a rodent because you can see the tail sticking out of the bun. A lawsuit was filled out against the store owner and the restaurant and the restaurant is under investigation but I can't find any update on this and Ellen does claim that the burger gave her anxiety and nightmares for the rest of her life and to be honest you can't blame her because she did take a bite out of a rat sandwich which is just disgusting. Arby's Human Finger A Michigan teen made a severe mistake by going to an Arby's. I'm not saying that he deserved it, but he should have saw it coming. In 2012, a teenager bit into his Arby's sandwich and he felt something hard and rubbery. Turns out he bit into a real severed finger because earlier that day, an employee accidentally cut her finger off with the meat slicer and somehow it was placed in a sandwich. The lady ran to the hospital after the incident, but she didn't tell anyone, but luckily she is safe. After the kid's mom found out, they called the cops and went to the hospital where the lady was being treated. The kid got treated and was given medicine in case if he got any diseases. The kid does have a lawyer, but that's all the information we have on this. So I assume a lawsuit was opened up and the restaurant itself, they did close down for a little bit, just so they can sanitize the restaurant, but the location is now up and running. Arby's Human Flesh Back to back on Arby's with this one. Don't eat at Arby's. In 2005, a mound of human flesh was found in a chicken sandwich, which the man took a fat, juicy bite out of the sandwich, which had human skin inside. 
Later that day, an Ohio restaurant manager was spotted by health inspectors sporting a bandage over his thumb and the manager confirmed that he accidentally cut a piece of his skin off while he was cutting lettuce and somehow the piece of skin got into the sandwich. And after that, the man did take legal action because that's the only sane thing to do after you took a bite of human skin, but there's no other update other than that. And I already know that nobody eats at Arby's, but after knowing this information, would you give it a try? Burger King PP Balloon in 2007, Van Miguel Heartless bit into a Burger King burger and inside, it had an unwrapped, possibly used, PP balloon. Obviously, the man filed a lawsuit because the PP burger gave him sustainable pain and suffering, vomiting, nightmares, and mental and emotional distress which I don't blame the man because he got a pee pee balloon in his burger and I'm not gonna lie, all the rat stories, they are kind of reasonable and logical how a rat got into the restaurant but how does a pee pee balloon get into a restaurant in the first place? Especially possibly used and unwrapped, that doesn't make sense and yeah like I said, he did file a lawsuit, but with many of these stories that filed a lawsuit, there is no other update other than that. McDonald's PP Balloon In 2009, a 7-year-old girl from Switzerland went to McDonald's with her mom to get a Happy Meal, and in her french fries, they found a possibly used PP Balloon. This is even worse than the last story because of the person's age in this story. How does this happen? And by the way, only one article says possibly used, while the other articles I read, they don't say it was possibly used. So hopefully it wasn't used. And even if it wasn't, like finding a PB balloon in food, that's already like the hugest no-no in fast food. The restaurant was under investigation and they had to take their girl to the hospital to test her blood in case if she got any diseases and that takes about four months and there's no other information on this we do not know if she's good and we do not know if they filed a lawsuit or not hopefully they did burger king needle in 2011 a hawaii-based soldier swallowed needles that were hidden in his burger king burger is suing the fast food chain Army Staff Sergeant Clark Bartholomew filed the federal lawsuit in Honolulu back in 2011. He's saying that he bought a triple stacker burger at a Burger King in December and took it home to eat. Clark claims that a needle pierced his tongue and he was hospitalized for six days after they found another needle stuck in his small intestine. I haven't eaten at Burger King for years just because I don't have one nearby, but after learning about this story, I am never eating Burger King ever again. McDonald's Rat Salad. We ain't finished with the rat stories because we have a few more. But in October 2006, NFL coach Todd Haley's wife went to McDonald's to order a salad, which should have been a red flag in the first place because you never order healthy food at a fast food restaurant because that doesn't exist. When she got home, she began to eat the salad and noticed a roof rat mixed into the salad, which caused her to vomit. She didn't bit into the rat, but at the same time, she was eating the salad that was touching the rat and that is just as gross. The Haley family called McDonald's where they bought the salad from and they actually had a manager pull up to their house but the manager wasn't apologetic at all. After that the restaurant was investigated but they didn't find any signs of rats so the rat could have came from the lettuce packaging which McDonald's bought it from Taylor's Farm. Then the Haley family sued the McDonald's franchise for 1.7 million dollars but Todd claims that it's not about the money but instead it's about McDonald's serving clean food which I agree with them and I'm not gonna lie 1.7 million is nice but let's be real it's about the money just a little bit. McDonald's dead rat coffee. In 2014 Ron Morris went to a Canadian McDonald's to order a coffee. 
while drinking the coffee, he gets to the last sips and he stated that for his last sips, he likes to remove the lid of the coffee and that's what he did. But when he did that, he found a dead mouse. And while researching this topic, I read so many articles and watched a few YouTube videos on this and only one video stated that there was feces in the cup as well, but the articles don't say that so take that with a grain of salt. Ron says that he did feel a little bit ill drinking from a rat, but he was pretty calm in the situation, so I'll give him props to that. And from the looks of it, I don't think he's suing McDonald's. Couldn't be me. Obviously, the restaurant went under investigation, but they don't have a rat problem, so they don't know how the rat got into the coffee, which is just disgusting and i don't know if he sued mcdonald's because in most of these articles they don't say if they sued him or not like all of that is private information for the most part so hopefully he did sue mcdonald's mcdonald's glass in 2015 another canadian mcdonald's will have another severe problem because a man bought an egg mcmuffin which had glass inside the sandwich after two bites of the sandwich, the man pulled glass out of his mouth and he actually took this to court and sued McDonald's for $15,000 in damages, but the judge only made McDonald's pay the man $1,770.20. You can't forget about the cents. McDonald's did argue saying that finding glass in a burger was impossible, so they assumed that the man just put the glass on his burger on purpose just so he can sue McDonald's, but there is no proof of that and either way, $1,770.20 doesn't hurt McDonald's at all. And it wasn't like a crazy amount of money. I mean, the man did want 15k originally, so maybe it was planted, but that is not confirmed and there is no proof of that. Wendy's Chili Finger. This last story is a different type of story and you'll see why later in this video, but on March 22nd, 2005, Anna Ayala went to a Wendy's to order some chili and while eating her bowl of chili, she would find a human finger in the bowl of chili. The restaurant was shut down for the day, but the strange part about this is that no employee lost their finger and there was also no injuries at all, including the factories where Wendy's buy their produce from. So how on earth did a finger get into the chili when there was zero injuries or zero reports of a finger being lost? We'll get to that soon. Health officials confirm it was indeed a finger and many news stations were reporting on this story and it went mainstream. Police investigated if there were any finger injuries around the area and they did find someone, but after testing their DNA, it did not match. Police started to do a background check on Anna because they were a little bit suspicious of her and it turns out that Anna is well known for getting lawsuits started against fast food companies and she even sued an El Pollo Loco and even won a settlement because she claims that the restaurant's food got her daughter sick. So you're telling me if food gets you sick, you can get paid by a fast food company? Taco Bell, here I come. Anyways, this was a red flag considering Anna is always starting trouble with fast food companies. So this could be another instance where Anna sets up a restaurant just so she can get paid. And if that's the case, where the f*** did she find a finger from? On April 21st, 2005, Anna was arrested for felony grand larceny and grand theft which aren't related to any fast food companies, but she was indeed arrested. Just because she got arrested, that doesn't solve the case on where the finger came from. But shortly after her arrest, it was discovered that the finger belonged to Brian Paul, who was the husband of one of Anna's friends, and Brian lost his finger back in 2004 from an industrial accident and sold the finger to Anna, just so she can put the finger in food just to win lawsuits against fast food companies. Anna only served four years in prison and she got out, but got arrested again for two years, but now she's free. And by the way, I know this video is about discussing things found in fast food restaurants. And in this story, the fast food restaurant is not at fault, but either way, this is a pretty fascinating story because in this story, the customer actually planted a disgusting item in their food 
just so she can win a settlement or lawsuit, but she failed. So yeah, um, she's free and I wonder what she's doing now. And that is the end of disgusting items found in fast food restaurants. And if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much because it really does mean a lot to me. And by the way, we finally got our first video to 1 million views. What? That is insane. And like, dude, what? 1 million views already? I don't know what to say, dude. Thank you so much. I am super super hyped and hopefully you think i earned your subscription by watching this video so don't forget to like and subscribe and also i got a very special package in because my earl arrived and don't forget to use code morbid for fun at checkout for nothing percent off pay full price and also i've been reading the comments and for some reason you guys are hairline phobic so i did buy an earl beanie which I am not going to wear for the videos. So thank you again for 1 million views and I'll see you guys in my next video. See you guys.